Today I'm going to show you how to make amazing concept art like this and actually take it and include it in a formatting tool so you can include this concept art in your books. Let's get into it. All right, so when it comes to creating art uh, with AI, there are a lot of different options and this isn't going to be a whole tutorial about how to do this, but there are basically three different options that we wanna look at. The first is Leonardo. The second is Midjourney, and the third is ChatGPT, specifically using Dolly 3 inside of ChatGPT. We're going to try all three to kind of give you a sense for the differences between them. And I'm going to try and keep a consistent style here so you can see how it handles the exact same style prompts differently because it, that may make a difference for you. I'm going to start with Midjourney because it's my favorite and it's the one that I actively use. And because I've sort of created different styles for my particular look that I'm going for. So we're going to be creating a image for this girl's father. His name is Rail, and it should go something like this. A 50 year old blonde man, worn and tired, holding a spear, small midi in the background and then i want to give it all of the style information and i've already created this in mid journey where i can just go dash dash and then say concept uh, which is just a short code that i made for myself that will basically take all of this back end information that you see here fantasy illustration digital illustration video game concept art concept art visible brush strokes vibrant colors and then an aspect ratio of two by three okay and that's all of that is provided here by saying the word concept. Again, this is not a full mid-journey tutorial. I'm just kind of walking you through my process. All right, so it's given us a couple of options here. I like these two on the bottom. None of them did a good job of holding a spear. This one kind of tried. He's holding a sword there, it looks like. So I'm going to run this a couple of times more to see if we can get something like that. You'll see that this is sometime, something that some... AI generators are better at than others is getting some of those details right where you want something specific to happen. Uh, and I don't necessarily need him to be holding a spear. It's just something he has in the story. And so it'd be great to see it if possible. Okay. One of the things I've noticed is that even though I asked for a small medieval village, it's giving me more of like a, a bigger town. So I'm going to change my prompt here from small medieval village to medieval setting and see if that does any better. Okay, I finally came up with one that was pretty much perfect. Uh, there's something a little bit weird with what's going on with this spear here, but at least he's holding a spear, kind of. You just sort of can't see the end of it. Um, but this looks pretty much how I imagined the guy pretty closely. So that I'm pretty happy with. And it's, you know, the background and everything is much more what I'm looking for. So this seems to be our winning prompt. I had to run it a couple of times to get it to, to give me this. But overall, this looks pretty good. I'm happy with the style of it too. It doesn't have that sort of weird AI-ish looking thing to it. That's one of the reasons why you want to have a consistent style is because it will keep it from looking obviously made with AI. If you don't have some specifics of what you were looking for with the style, it will look obviously like an AI image. And you know, while anybody who looks at this would eventually be able to figure out that it's AI, it doesn't look as obvious just on the surface. Midjourney is one way that you can do that, but let's take this exact same prompt and we're going to use it here in ChatGPT to give us an image. Now, because this is ChatGPT, I'm gonna add precursor at the beginning here, say create an image of the whole thing there and see what it gives us. Okay, give us something. First of all, he is definitely holding the spear and the details here definitely look a lot better. There is something that just doesn't quite look right about, you know, it looks a little bit more AI generated to me. Something about the lighting and the way it works here, like there's something not quite right about it to me. And he definitely doesn't look how I imagine him. So maybe what we can do I'm going to try one of these GPTs to see if it does any better. And yeah, this is this is better. Uh, definitely not exactly what I envisioned, though. Let me just tweak the prompt to make him more like a 45 year old because he, he's looking a little bit too old in these pictures. The other obvious thing that you can see here is that it's a square image. 
And while Dolly 3 can do landscape and portrait mode, it's unreliable sometimes and you can't tweak exactly the image ratio that you want, which is a bit of an issue if you're asking me. I would, you know, any of the other AI generating platforms can create things pretty much immediately. And this is better, but it's making it look like it's an image within an image. So yeah, not not the best job here even though it does do some things better like having the spear and things like that um i'm going to say make it in portrait mode so it gave it to me in portrait mode but it's still doing this thing where they're making it look like i'm photoshopping the image which is kind of weird also i asked for medieval it's giving me something a little bit more like a century ago not quite medieval so you could definitely work with this until you get something that you like but even this like looks very obviously AI generated to me. Just something about the lighting, the sort of softness of the lighting is, is very much an AI generated giveaway. So Dolly 3, while it can be good for some specific things, you know, like if you need specific details, like the spear here, which it's managed to do almost perfectly in each one, then I would give Dolly a pass on for creating concept art. But we do have one more to try, and that is Leonardo. As you can see, I've already did a, a few of my main character here. Did a great job. Let's go ahead and use this exact same prompt. 50-year-old blonde man, worn and tired, fit, holding spear, etc., etc., and go ahead and use it. One of the great things about Leonardo is that it will actually give you a number of free credits every single day. So if you're looking to use a AI-generated art service and don't want to pay anything you just need a few things here and there then this is a good one to look at and look at this this is actually not too bad he looks about right the spear is like way too massive of a spear in both of these images but there is a spear uh, which is saying something it still has a little bit of that ai generated quality to me so i'm going to run this again maybe create a few more images and here's what we got and i actually kind of like some of these this one here looks to be like the most cohesive image it's got he's got the spear his face isn't quite how i imagine him so i might take this prompt and bring him down to 45 try that and see if it's any better but overall this is doing rather well but i will say just like the general style overall kind of seems a bit more sloppy and lacking in the kind of artistic finesse you know the i'm not doing this to say that mid journey is better because mid journey definitely has flaws you know like it struggled to get anything remotely resembling a spear but there's something about the aesthetic i think is definitely superior in mid journey to almost any other option barring like self-training your own ai model on your own work it's going to be difficult to find anything outside of mid journey that can do aesthetics the way mid journey does and one of the reasons one of the things we could do is I've been using version five for this particular image. We could run the exact same prompt again, but use version six. The reason I've been using version five is because I can upscale it uh, by two or four times, uh, which is definitely something we're gonna wanna do here in a second. But let's go ahead and just come back to Midjourney and try it with version six and see if that makes a difference. Maybe he'll be holding a, a spear more consistently this time. And these last just generated in Leonardo. And this one I think is my favorite so far. The only issue I see here is that this is almost like bits of his clothing here are almost realistic, uh, which is not really the the style the, that I want. So that, that would be something to keep an eye on. Something like this is a little bit more animated looking and, and better. But almost all of these, the spear is looking like way too much. But yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. All right, version six was weird I did a lot of weird things he is holding a spear but the style is totally i would have to completely tweak the style prompt because this is almost too much here what it's doing yeah so i'm gonna stick primarily with the style that i got here this is much closer to what i actually want so this is the one i'm going to be using what we're going to do now is i'm going to upscale it twice or not twice but i'm going to upscale it by 2x That'll give us a nice high quality version of the image to work with. All right, and then here we have the upscaled image. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And then here comes the fun part of actually getting it and formatting it so it'll fit inside a book. What I envision here is that we'll have a book that 
has the image completely spread out to the edges of the page so that you can see the entire thing. And so there's no gaps in the margins or anything like that. And Atticus has a good way to do that. This is not sponsored by Atticus or anything, but this is a preview of what it will look like on the page. And you can see there's no gaps or anything here. So what I'm gonna do is show you how, to, how this is done. The, but before we do that, we need to make sure that the image is at the appropriate size because in order to get a full page image, you have to have a specific size cropped specifically for the size of the book that you are actually doing. So thankfully, Atticus has this handy calculator on their website where you put, if you put in the trim size of your book, which in this case I know is going to be five by eight, that's my preferred trim size for books. I like, I like my paperbacks a little bit smaller. A five by eight is the size that I go with. If I hit calculate, it gives me the actual inches and pixel width of the image that I need. Uh, if I want it to fit flush all the way to the edge of the page, it would need to be exactly 1538 by 2475. So what I can do, and I've already done this, is go into Photoshop and create a template, which is this is, and if we go to the image size of this template, it's exactly 1538 by 2475. So we know that this, any images that uh, come out of this template will fit into that space. So now all we have to do is grab our newly upscaled version of the image and just place it to the right space so that we now have this image. Now this is where we could touch this up a little bit with Photoshop's own AI. And there's not much that we need to do here. I think this is okay. The spear is looking a little, like it's, it's not really an issue. Like it's not disappearing into anything. And then all I have to do is export it. And now I have a version of this concept art that is specifically fit for this. So all I have to do in Atticus now is come down here where it says add new chapter right next to that. There's these three little dots. Go ahead and select full page image. And all you have to do is take, click and drag the image in here and you've got it here. Make sure full bleed is checked right here and that's all you have to do. Now, if we come here and preview this chat, this page, you'll see this is what it's gonna look like on the page, assuming it's printed in color, which it, if you're publishing on Amazon, it probably won't be. But additionally, you can preview, say what it would look like on an iPhone if you're reading it there which would be in color if anybody's reading the ebook version or on an iPad, there's all kinds of different things here. And this isn't sponsored by Atticus or anything. I don't even have an affiliate account with Atticus. Hopefully that'll come later, but they, they are my number one choice for formatting. And then additionally, you can take these images and do whatever you want with them. You can give them away to readers. You can create bookmarks out of them, merchandise. You, you can use them in your advertising, uh, all kinds of things you can do with all of this art that you generate as part of your concept art making process. And it's also worth noting that you could just do this for yourself. This could just be just to visualize the characters so that you have a sense of what they look like and how they might appear and not even worry about publishing it in any kind of commercially available media. Uh, also, because I know I'm going to get questions about this, what happens with Amazon if you include work like this. Well, you will have to disclose that you have AI generated work in your book, but Amazon is not taking down books that use AI generated content like this. And if you hear instances where that is the case, I guarantee you that those instances are falsely accusing AI of being the culprit in those particular instances. There are instances where Amazon will take down your book for other reasons, say for spammy reasons or just really, really poor content. But barring those things, if you have a quality book and you, by the way, have the full rights to use pictures like this in your books, then by all means, go for it. And Amazon does not, at least at this time, penalize you. And I would be shocked if they ever do at any point in the future, because Amazon is going all in with AI with different platforms and investments that they are making. So keep that in mind. If you would like to know more about using AI for art, I have a whole video that I did about creating book covers with art, if that is something that you are interested in. And go, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested, and I'll see you in the next video.